In this problem, we're told when startled, an armadillo will leap upward. Suppose it rises 0.544 meters in the first 0.2 seconds. A, what is its initial speed as it leaves the ground? B, what is its speed at the height of 0.544 meters? And C, how much higher does it go? So let's draw a drawing of what's going on. So we have this armadillo, and we know it's going to, we're going to say it rises 0.544 meters, so it's going to jump up. Right, and the distance it's going to travel is 0.544 meters. And so we know it's going to do this in 0.2 seconds. So this is just a drawing of what's going on. So it's going to jump up in this time. And so let's write down what we're given. So I'm going to do that up here. So given. So what are we told? So we know the change in y or the distance it's going to travel upwards. So whenever I solve these free fall problems like this, you always want to write down all your variables for the kinematic equations and then decide whether or not you have it. So if you look on the right, we have all these kinematic equations, or these are the kinematic equations, and we're going to write down every single variable and then decide whether or not we have it. So notice how these say delta x. Just keep in mind it's delta y because we're using the y direction. So just pretend it's delta y. So we have delta y, v, v sub 0, a, and then t. So let's decide if we have the variables. So we already know that we have delta y, right? The change in its y distance, right? The change in the y component. We know it's going to travel 0.544 4 meters. So we know that. Do we know the final velocity? So the velocity at the end of this interval, we don't know that. So I'm going to put question mark. Do we know the initial velocity? Uh, we don't know that either. Keep in mind it's asking for it right here, the initial speed. And then v, it was asking for that right here in b. So we don't know that either. Do we know a? So A is not told, but it's always implied that it's going to be minus 9.8 meters per second squared. And the reason this is, this is the uh, force of gravity. And the reason it's negative is because it's acting down on us. It's pushing the object down. So just assume it's negative 9.8 meters per second squared. And then the time, we do know that. They tell us how long it takes to get there. It's going to be 0.2 seconds. So that's going to be that. We now know our given. Let's go ahead and start with A. So A is going to be, what is the initial speed as it leaves the ground? So initial speed means we're solving for V sub 0. And so V sub 0 is the initial velocity. So we need to use an equation uh, that solves for V sub 0. But we need to use the variables in the equation, uh, the ones that we're given. So notice how we're given delta Y, we're given T, and we're given A. So if you look at these equations, I think this is going to be the best one. right? Because we have delta Y, we have A we have t and we're solving for v sub 0. So I'm going to use this one. Uh, so yeah, this is going to be the best one to use. I think it's the only one we can use too. So let's just go ahead and start solving. So it's going to be delta y, right? It says delta x. Just imagine it's delta y. So we know that's 0 0.544 equals v sub 0 times t, which is 0 0.2 plus 1 half times a, which we know is minus 9.8 times t squared, which is 0.2 squared. So in order to solve for v sub 0, which is the variable we're trying to find, I'm going to move this to the other side. So it's going to become 0.544 minus, right? Because it's going to be, if we imagine this whole thing is together, you can just minus it. So minus 1 half times minus 9.8 times 0.2 squared. And then this is going to be equal to v sub 0 times 0.2. So I'm just going to divide both sides by 0.2 to get it by itself. So equals v sub 0. Divide this whole thing by 0.2. So if you go ahead and do this, 0.544 minus 1 half times minus 9.8 times 0.2 squared. And then you divide that by 0.2. You're going to get it equals 3.7. So keep in mind, this is the initial velocity, 3.7. And then we measure it in meters per second because we're using meters in seconds. So 3.7 meters per second, that's our initial velocity. Let's write that down. So 3.7 meters per second. So that's going to be your answer to A. Let's move on to B. So B is, what is its speed at the height of 0.544 meters? So this we're going to be solving for the final velocity. And so we're just going to make sure that our Y is going to be 0.544. So if we take a look at the equations, uh, I think the best one to use here is uh, this one right here. You can probably use any of them as long as they contain V. So you could use any of them except for the third one. But I'm going to choose to use this one, which is V equals V sub 0 plus A times T. 
Because keep in mind, we know the initial velocity. We know a, minus 9.8. And we know the time it's going to take to get this distance, right? Because they tell us it takes 0.2 seconds to get here. So we can just plug in. So v sub 0, we know is 3.7. Plus a, so a is minus 9.8. So it's just going to be minus 9.8 times t, which is 0.2. So if you go ahead and do this, 3.7 minus 9.8 times 0.2, you're going to get 1.74 meters per second, right? Because the initial velocity is in meters per second, this one also is. So your answer to B is going to be 1.74 meters per second. Now let's move on to C. So we're trying to find C, how much higher does it go? So this one's going to require a bit more steps. But I want you to think about, so when it says how much higher does it go, essentially we want to find... So if this is our armadillo, right, it's going to jump up. We want to find its maximum height, right? So it's going to reach some maximum height. But we know along the way, we know it's going to hit 0.544 meters. So we're trying to find this distance right here. So we're trying to find the distance from the maximum height to this point, right? Because it's saying how much higher does it go from this point. And so what we want to do is find the maximum height and then subtract uh, 0.544 meters. And then we're going to get this distance in between. So that's essentially how it works, but first we need to find the maximum height. So how do we do that? The way we're going to do that is by setting v equal to zero. So the way how free fall works is its maximum height is going to be when the velocity, final velocity is equal to zero. So instead of having uh, being 1.74, we're just going to set it equal to zero. And then we're going to use that to solve. So just keep in mind that this is going to be zero for this question. And so we're trying to find a distance, right? So we're trying to find delta y. We're using v, so it's uh, we have v. It's going to be equal to zero, right? So I think this one's going to be the best one to use. V squared equals V sub zero squared plus 2A times delta Y, right? Because we can set this equal to zero. We know the initial velocity. We know the acceleration. And we can find uh, the distance uh, it's going to take. So keep in mind, this distance right here is going to be the total distance it takes to travel. So it's going to be from the beginning where it starts to the end. So then we're going to subtract 0.544 from this. So let's go ahead and solve. So v squared, we know v is going to be 0 because at 0 is when it hits it, its peak. So 0 squared is just 0 equals v sub 0, which is 3.7 squared plus 2. We know a is gravity minus 9.8, and then that's times delta y. So we're solving for delta y. Uh, I'm going to move this to the other side. So it's going to be minus 3.7 squared equals 2 times minus 9.8. And this is just going to be minus 19.6. So minus 19.6 times delta y. And then we can divide both sides by minus 19.6. So if you go ahead and take your calculator and do this, 3.7 squared, and then you divide it by 19.6, you're going to get, and then so keep in mind the negatives cancel. So delta y is going to be equal to 0 0.698 and so on. I'm going to round just to the 0.7, just to make it easier. So 0.7, and then keep in mind what units we're using. It's measured in meters. So this is going to be the change in y from where it starts to where it ends. So imagine this is its starting point. It's going to travel up to its maximum height. And so we know this total distance is 0.7 meters. And so they're trying to find how much higher it goes from the point, or what, the 0.544 meters. So essentially, we're trying to find how much higher it goes, which is this, this distance right here. So you just want to take the total distance, 0.7, and then minus 0.544. And that's going to give you your final answer. So 0.7 minus 0.544 is going to be equal to 0.156. And then units are going to be in meters because we're using meters. So 0.156 meters, that's going to be your answer to C. And so yeah, hopefully you found this useful.